For data logging, alarm logging, and recipe management, we'll see how to use a client connection to test the SQL Server engine or the appropriate database engine that you're using with the features. We'll see how to use error logging to determine what errors are being returned from the database engine, and often this error message will indicate how to resolve the issue. The most common problem logging to a database engine, like SQL Server, is that the SQL Server engine needs to have an account access login in order to open the database, read information from the database, and write information to the database. Next, let's discover how to resolve common data logging, alarm logging, and recipe management problems to database engines. The first thing we might want to do is test the database connection. I will demonstrate Microsoft SQL Server with the SQL Server Management Studio. When we first connect to the database engine, we want the server name to be exactly the same as we have specified in the data logging, alarm logging, or recipe configuration. You can connect with either Windows Authentication or SQL Server Authentication, so make sure you're using the same connection method from OPC System Service. When selecting Connect, if you can connect to the database engine, then you have the proper server name and security settings to be able to connect into the database engine. Let's go through a quick data logging example and how we might see how to resolve data logging issues. Select Configure Data Logging. I'll select the local service to set up. I'll enter in a group name of Test, Activate the Logging, and I'll browse for a few tags to add to the data logging configuration. Next, we'll go to the Database tab. I will enable Logging to Database, select the SQL Server engine, and I need to obtain the server name from the SQL Server Management Studio. I'll enter a database name of Test123 and a table name of OPC Test. I'll then add that logging group and it should automatically add the database to the SQL Server engine if it does not already exist and add the table OPC test if it does not already exist and add the field names that we have specified under the tags tab. We can check that with the SQL Server Management Studio by going to databases and there we see the database test123. Under the tables object we have the OPC test table. We can right click on that and query that table. and there we see we have values. Let's now stop the database engine to replicate a database problem. This might also be representative of a network loss if you're logging to a remote SQL Server engine. If we now return to the error log directory where the OPC systems errors are being recorded and double click on the latest error log we see that we have errors indicating that we have a first write failure with an exception that the connection problem to the database. If we close the error log and open it again, we'll see we have further errors of not being able to open the database. This could be related to a security problem in the SQL Server engine, which I'll show you how to overcome in just a moment. But of course at this time, we actually have a true database engine problem that can simply be resolved by starting the database engine again with the SQL Server Management Studio. During the time that we had the database engine down, the system has been buffering the data so that when the service is then available, we have lost no data during that time that the database engine was stopped. So if we come back in and query the table again, we'll see that no data has been lost in your system. Under Configure Options is a property to store data logging buffer to disk by default it uses RAM of up to 10,000 records. But if we choose the option to store data logging buffer to disk, you are then only limited by the amount of hard disk space of where you plan to do the data buffering during the temporary network loss or database engine failures. I'll now use the SQL Server Management Studio to replicate a security problem of being able to write to the database engine. Under the security object, I'll then go to logins and I'm going to add a SQL Server login. Instead of using Windows Authentication, I'll select 
SQL Server authentication. I'll put in a username of test and appropriate password. Under the server roles, you'll want to add access privilege so that this account can be able to open the database and write values to it. For now, we're going to leave that at the default. Under the user mappings, you may also want to map this account to each database engine for the proper privilege to read and write to the database. For now, I'm going to select the option to deny data writer so that this account does not have access privilege to write to this database. I'll then select OK and go back to the configure application and select the configure data logging tab. Under the database tab, I am now going to uncheck the option to use Windows authentication and enter in that username and password for the SQL Server login and apply changes. If we return back to the error log directory and double click on the latest error file, we see that we have a login failure of being able to both open the database and being able to create the database. If the database login fails, it will automatically try to create that database. Of course, this database possibly already exists, so you may get both an open failure and a creation failure. If we then return back to the SQL Server Management Studio and correct the login for the test account to allow access privilege to be able to write to that database, we can go to the user mappings, select the database that we're logging to, uncheck the deny reader, check all other options except for deny data reader and deny data writer, click OK, When we requery that table, we see that we haven't lost any data as the data buffering feature has worked for us, even though we didn't have the proper credentials to open the database. When you're working with opcrecipe.net, it has its own logging feature for transactions each time the recipe executes. The directory that that information is stored under is the same directory that we specify the error log path found under configure options. So we have looked at some of the most common things that you might run into using the OPC Systems.net software in connecting to database engines, OPC servers, and client applications. If you have any other issue, I would first recommend to start by looking in the error log of the OPC system service to see if you can resolve the error with the description that is provided there, or contact us at support at OPCSystems.com if you have some other issue that you cannot resolve.